Uh, good morning all. Um, my name is Peter King. I'm the chairman of the Australian Cricket Hall of Fame. Firstly, I'd like to acknowledge that we're meeting today on the traditional land of the Kulin people. The land, now called Yarra Park, has been a special meeting place for hundreds of years, long before the MCG took its place here and made it a place for, meeting, uh, for meetings of another kind. We pay our respects to the elders past, present and emerging. The Australian Cricket Hall of Fame was first proposed by the Melbourne Cricket Club as a way to recognise the great contribution some of our best athletes have made to the game, has welcomed some of cricket's biggest names. We gather again today to welcome our latest inductee. Selection criteria for the Australian Cricket Hall, in Flame, Hall of Fame includes the player has to be retired for at least five years, uh, prior to their induction, boasting an outstanding statistical record during their career, but also demonstrating their status as an Australian sporting legend. On and off the pitch, our inductees have shown excellence on the world stage, and I think you'll agree today that um, who we're about to induct um, has had an incredible impact on the game over a long period of time. As Chairman of the Australian Cricket Hall of Fame, it, uh, it gives me great pleasure to introduce the 56th cricketer to be inducted joining the late Johnny Muller uh, as a fellow 2021 inductee. So I'd like to introduce Mr Merv Hughes. So I'll give you a little bit of a background here before you get to say anything. But uh, obviously a very proud Victorian, born in the country town of Euroa, rising through the ranks via Footscray and Victoria, Merv's international career spanned a decade of test and ODIs. Um, he'd go on to capture 212 test wickets from 53 test matches at a superb average of 28.38, plus collect 38 wickets from his 33 ODIs in an era when Australia was rising toward cricket dominance. A hulking figure <coughs> of six foot four, who bowled fast, was loyal to his teammates and an aggressor to opposition batsmen. It's no surprise that Merv endeared himself to the Australian cricket public. For so long and so many, he is the soundtrack and the iconic image of an Australian summer. So unforgettable were his pre-bowling warm-up and stretching routines held on the boundary that led to bays and bays of spectators joining him. Memorably, right in front of his home state's fans here at the MCG and often in front of the old Bay 13, which is where we're gathered today in respect of that wonderful piece of uh, of activity that Mr. Mr Hughes put together. Uh, just as unforgettable was Merv's test hat-trick against the West Indies at the Wacker in 1988, uh, then becoming the seventh Australian to achieve the feat and just the 19th men's overall. Um, made all the more remarkable it was achieved across three overs, two innings and two days. Uh, post cricket, Merv has continued to contribute to Australian cricket as a national selector from 2005 to 10 as well as a feature, uh, featuring as an ambassadorial roles for tour groups in support of the Australian men's cricket team as well as charitable causes for Cricket Australia including our charity partner Movember. He is the heartbeat of Australian cricket and on behalf of the Australian Cricket Hall of Fame it is my great pleasure and I, and I think it's a personal pleasure. I, I have known Merv for a long time, I've played with him and against him and um, it's, it's a feeling that never leaves you when Merv's ear, uh, his, his tongue enters your <laughs> ear after you've just got a wicket. Um, but I'm, I'm very proud and uh, very happy to be inducting Merv into the Australian Cricket Hall of Fame today. So Merv, congratulations oh, thank you. mate. Cheers. Thank you. We've got a very heavy trophy for you. Hold that for a oh, yeah, if you could, that'd be great, Peter. <laughs> Thanks very much. Um, Peter, thank you very much for the kind words. Um, to be inducted, it it's, has just blown me away, to be honest. Uh, obviously got a lot of people to thank and to start from the early days and work through. So right from junior cricket, I've been very lucky to have good people around me um, and good people as, as leaders. So from... Um, Marty Sharkey from the Werribee under-14s um, through to, to Werribee, Jeff Bean and Jeff Billman, um, two fast bowls at Werribee that were 
um, I suppose when I was a kid, uh, they, were, they were heroes of mine. Then to, to Footscray, um, to get down to Footscray and have great leadership there, and Lindsay James, Ken Eastwood, uh, Jim Mann, and Ron Gaunt, the former Australian cricketer, as a bowling coach there, into the state squad, and all the coaches I had, but particularly Ian Redpath, um, along with Keith Stackpole and Alan Conley, were fantastic and got us ready for international cricket. And then to get into the Australian side, um, my selection in, in my first test coincided with Bob Simpson's first test match as, as coach. Alan Border had been appointed as, as captain um, and you couldn't get any stronger leadership than that. Um, family, uh, i just stoked to have my family here today, so the wife and three kids. Um, probably a little bit unfortunate mum and dad couldn't be here, but um, so just grateful for everything that, that they did to me and for me. And also um, sister Peter and, and brother Gary, they've been there for the long haul. And two people I really want to thank, uh, Tony Dottermade, um, just a great mate, Footscray, Victoria, Australia, to have him there was fantastic. And my little mate from, from Werribee, um, Snapper, Gavin Whitey, um, just kept me level, I suppose. If I was starting to get a bit of a head of myself when I was taking a few wickets, I'd, I'd get a slap on the back of the head. So really appreciate that. But uh, so many more people I could thank. Um, there's obviously people that I've missed, and I, I do apologise for that. But to, to all the coaches I've had a, across the board, uh, to all, all the teammates that I've played with, um, as I said, from where we be under 14, right through, it's, it's it's been an absolute thrill and an absolute honour. But uh, really stoked to to be inducted, and uh, as Peter said, to to come in alongside some of the names that are in there. Um, yeah, it's a, a little bit overwhelming and obviously uh, a little bit emotional, but um, yeah, just very very happy with it. So uh, to the Cricketing Hall of Fame, to the MCC, to Cricket Australia, to the Australian Cricket Association, uh, very much appreciated. Thank you. Well, 20, 25, 26 out of the game, you, you think you're sort of uh, long forgotten. But um, to, to get this recognition, um, now obviously it's a, a game that, that I love playing. Uh, made a lot of lot of friendships from it, um, and yeah, to 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 be added to the list of, of people in the Hall of Fame, yeah, a little bit overwhelming. It's still special to you, cricket and, and modern cricket. Um, yeah, yeah, very special. Um, just. Probably as when I was selecting, obviously you followed a, a lot of um, first class cricket and don't really have my finger on the pulse there, but to follow the Australian team now and um, just in awe of the, the way they go about it um, from from top to bottom. And um, I, think, I think people think cricket's a, an easy game and the criticism that the Australian team has, has copped just recently after the Indian um, tour, I just can't fathom why. Um, they're, they're a fantastic side and I think as Australians we just expect them to win everything and unfortunately you can't do that but uh, mate in, in awe of the Australian side at the moment and that, that bowling attack they've got um, it, like, it's pretty good isn't it so when you've got Pat Cummings and um, Josh Hazelwood, Mitch Stark and you've got Nathan Lyon in there and you feel sorry for the players on the fringe because uh, with the calibre of those players it, it doesn't look like they're going to get much of a show what do you make of those fringe guys coming through? And the um, there's, the test there's some exciting prospects in there. All right, James Pattinson, obviously uh, Victorian, know him fairly well, and you know to know what he's capable of. Um, Nessa from from Queensland, Jai Richardson, um, good young talent coming through. So, from the selectors' point of view, obviously they've got they've got options, um, which is good, and and that probably keeps the heat on the guys in the team. <laughs> um, yeah, well, it's no accident, as Peter said, that we're in front of Bay 13. Um, so, I, Clint, to, to be honest, I've, I've always said, and we used to have discussions, arguments, call it what you like in the Australian team, about the, the best ground in Australia. And obviously the New South Wales guys came up with the SCG, 
and they'd put up a, a fairly reasonable argument until it would say, listen, if you want to play in front of a good crowd, you come to the MCG. Um, you know, if you're happy playing in front of 40, 50,000 people, you go to the SCG, don't you? But to the support that we got here, um, the Australian side, the support we got was was fantastic. And, and I've always said there was only one thing better than being in the Australian side playing at the MCG, and that was being a Victorian in the Australian side playing at the MCG. The, su the support we got here was just overwhelming. And what was it like to come here to this section of the <laughs> um, I, I would say... I would say for an opposition player, it would be quite intimidating. Um, but, but for an Australian player, and, and especially for a Victorian in the Australian team, to, to come down here and, and have the, the crowd right behind you. So um, whether it be Boxing Day, and I didn't play many um, one-day games here, but um, you always hoped if, if it was a, a test match, there was a left-hander on strike, so you'd be, be in this area. And, um, Mate, I, Bay 13, something about the guys that came in, in Bay 13, uh, probably about my demographic, I reckon. Uh, so, yeah, it felt very comfortable down here. How did it sit over time being a, a cult figure right from those days, even through till now? Um, well, I've, I've got you blokes to thank for that, the media, and I, I sort of overlooked you in, in the, the thank you speech I had before, but um, the media can make and break players, and, and certainly the media made me. Um, so, I... Tough times the first four or five years, and um, we go off to England in '89, and there's more focus on a on a bloke with a moustache that probably at the start of the tour wasn't going to get a game. So um, to to the meter, I'm I'm obviously very grateful. Um, you know, they as I said, make you or break you, and and certainly the media's very, been very kind to me over the years. Um. Yeah, you look look back on it, and uh, it's not saying much for fast bowlers. I think here, Clint, that um, you know people say, "What was it like getting a hat trick?" And when you say, "Well, I, I didn't realise I was on a hat trick," um, people look at you and say, well, "It was three wickets in three balls," and uh, yeah, but it was over two days and three overs, and uh, the the break in the the overs in the first innings. Tim May took a wicket, so I think things got lost in that, and uh, certainly at the end of of the the second day when Jeff Lawson got hit by the third day, I think, uh, Jeff Lawson got hit by Kirtley Ambrose and we declared, but well, we had half an hour to bowl and the emotion wasn't about the game, the emotion was about a teammate uh, being hit. So um, to, to go out and get a wicket, Gordon Greenwich, um, first ball, it's, I reckon that's a huge, huge feather in your cap. And uh, a little bit excited about that, pumped up about the, the situation of the game and um, didn't find out for probably a couple of overs that I'd taken a hat-trick. Steve Waugh came down to get my jumper for the, the second over I bowled after Tony Lottaway bowled his over and said, I think you got a hat-trick. I said, oh, I don't think so. And he went through it. And I said, no, I don't think so. And he said, yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure. And I said, well, what makes you so sure? He said, oh, I just heard it on the PA system. So, <laughs> yeah, good luck. But, yeah, I, I don't think any of the players realised um, I was on a hat-trick and... It was interesting to hear that um, the emotions were were high because of the hat trick. Mate, to be honest, had no idea I was on a hat trick. Have you got a standout moment or highlight from your international career? Um, 89 Ashes series from start to finish. Um, so just to, to be selected on on that tour, um, first tour with the Australian side, the history and tradition with the with the Ashes and. Um, we're, within the team, I think we'd felt that we'd been building towards something and um, Bob Simpson, Alan Border and, and Laurie Sewell um, were appointed around the same time and, and those three blokes deserve a lot of credit where cricket got to. Um, Bob Simpson, obviously the, the three of them put a plan in place. After two years, Australia won the World Cup in, in India, so it was a progression and it really didn't come into test cricket for, for three or four years, but within the team, um, we could see light at the end of the tunnel and um, we weren't losing series by a great deal, so there was a, a lot of draws. And um, basically, uh, Simo had the same, I suppose, outlook as, as Ian Redpath did, is that if we can't win, we're not going to lose. And you get, you get credits for that. So uh, we went through a tough time um, and, and 89, things just clicked together. And to get blokes of the calibre of Terry Alderman Carl Rackerman and, and Trevor Holmes back in the side for that tour 
and leading up to that tour and a group of guys that have been together for, for three or four years. Uh, that was just uh, very rewarding, that tour. Uh, I don't think so. No. Um, I, I suppose it's just sort of drummed India as, as a young bloke. Like we, we can accept defeat from, from anyone, but not England. And, and when you get into the Australian side too, it's, that's drummed India. Um, and you know, Australia, I think, play their very best cricket against England, have for a long time, um, and leading up to, to where we played. And 1989, like we went over very underrated. And, and not expected to win, um, but, but to come away from that having won 4-0, like the, the guys within that team, so Alan Border's captain, Jeff Marsh, Burney, um, Steve War, Mark Taylor, um, you go through Terry Alderman, Jeff Lawson, um, you had a look at the side and, and you just thought, at the start of the tour, we've got experience and youth, um, it's, it's not a bad side, I reckon we'll go OK, but um, to win it 4-0, Again, testament to the strong leadership we had.